Awesome. All right, all right, all right. We got another one. It's been a long Saturday. Well, we're here getting it popping, so let's get it done. Let's get it done. All right. Any case, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at 2-8 literal equations, okay? This is why we need to make sure we know all of our properties when working with values, okay? Every single thing we've done up till now, we've been solving problems. We've been figuring out problems, as in like we've been actually finding a value for something like a variable. These problems are a little bit more abstract because at the end of the day, when we finish these problems, we're not really going to end up with a number answer. We're going to end up with a mathematical like equation answer. And that's why it's super important that we learn all the skills. But let's just take a look. Let's just start with number one. Okay, something basic. Start with number one. Okay, as you can see, I'm going to go here. You know, I'm just making it big. And it's a basic problem. It's the most basic problem on that page because it's number one. We have ourselves 7t equals x. And what we need to do for this problem is we need to solve for x. Okay, sorry, not for x. For t. Let me, let me go in and make sure we got this right. It shows that we need to solve for t. All right, we need to solve for t. You know what? I don't like that. Let me go ahead and highlight it instead. We need to solve for t. That's what we need. But right now, if you could see, they actually have x isolated. We need to isolate the variable t. Okay, that's essentially what it's asking us to do. All right. Well, right now we have ourselves 7t equals x. The t is not isolated, but we could get isolated. It's not that hard to get it isolated. Look at what the t is with. The t is with the 7. Technically, it's 7 times t equals to x. So we have one step we need to do in this problem. We just got one thing we got to do. We have to divide both sides by seven, okay? Because we want to isolate the variable t. And what's with the t? Well, the multiplication of seven. So the sevens cancel, right? Because that's just how we do it. You know, that's how it's always done. Usually we would get an answer for the other side of the equation. But this is where it's different. Notice the t stays the same. The equal sign also stays the same. And the x over 7, that's it. We don't have to solve or do anything. So our new equation for t would be t equals x over 7. And we have successfully isolated the variable t. All right, that's what we did here. That's what we did. That's what we got to do in these problems, okay? But they're not all this easy, okay? We practice. We get better at it, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at the harder one, okay? I'm going to go ahead and take a look at... Mm, let's take a look at number seven here. I like number seven because it has multiple variables, variables that we end up using. And actually, I picked it because I'm going to go ahead and give you a little snapshot. In the future, we're going to be using a lot of these types of equations. It's called standard form okay it's called standard form okay i mean that's like uh you know it's like if we were in the marvel cinematic universe this would be donald showing up during the avengers at the very end saying hey it's gonna be me doing it well yeah i just gave it to you right now i'm telling you newsflash we're gonna be using a lot of standard form pretty soon okay second six weeks we're gonna be hitting it maybe even sooner so we have ourselves, well, look, you don't have to do this. This is just a heads up, maybe second six weeks. But right now, we're just looking at solving for y. In this problem, it asks us to isolate the variable, all right? We're isolating the variable, but in this problem, we want to isolate the variable y, okay? We want y to be by itself. As you can see, y is surrounded by a bunch of junk. So I'm going to go ahead and get the equation. Let's go ahead and write it down here. We have x minus 2y, 2 times y, 
equals to one. All right. That's just what we see. That's what we got. That's what we got to work with. Okay. Let me draw my line straight down from the equal sign. It's more of an organizational thing for me. We want to isolate the Y. All right. Now, I hope you could see here that in this problem, we have the variable X on the same side as the Y. All right. We don't want anything touching that Y. We don't want any other variables messing us up, giving us problems. So really what we should be doing here is just canceling out the X from the left side. We're going to move it over. Well, what kind of X is it? It's a positive X. The opposite of a positive X is a negative X. We're going to subtract X from both sides. But notice I did something different here. I did not put, usually when we do these problems, I put the X, well, I put the number underneath the number because we're actually doing work. But in this problem right now, there's no work to be done, all right? So the first thing we got to do is subtract X from both sides. And notice what the new equation turns into, okay? We're going to have ourselves, the X is canceled, right? This makes a zero pair, right? This doesn't go away. I mean, it's the same. The math does not go away. We're left with negative 2Y on the left side. We got an equal sign in the middle. And now we have 1 minus X on the right side. Okay, there you go. There you go. That's what we have. Our first step was to subtract X from both sides. And there you go. We got it. Okay. We got one more step. It seems like we have to do. All right. So we got ourselves this negative 2Y. All right. You know what? Let's go ahead and just do this before we even go on further. Okay. I just wanted to make, I was going to do this at the very end, but I'm just going to do it right now because I don't want to, I need to get to it. The right side is okay, but technically we should write it in the correct order, okay? So, you know, I just noticed I didn't write it in the correct order. I, I want to write it in the correct order, okay? So what do you mean, Mr. Legal? Well, remember, I've always said that the variable should be first, and then the constant should be afterwards. And I just noticed, hey, I put my variable first. I'm going to show you that you better move the variable correctly. This is a negative X because we're subtracting X. That's a negative X. I'm moving the negative X to the front. And that one, that positive one, I'm moving it behind it, okay? I just wanted to get that out of the way because at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, we got to make sure it's in the correct format. And in mathematics, we always want the variables before the values or the constants, okay? It's just, a, it's just an organizational thing. Now, anyways, anyways, after I put that in order, right, now we're going to end up working with this, okay? I don't know why I drew that line. I didn't mean to draw it so long, okay? But anyways, we got ourselves the negative 2y on the left side, and we have ourselves negative x plus 1 on the right side. Remember, the whole point of what we're doing is solving for y, isolate the variable. So there's stuff still on the side with the y. The opposite of negative 2 times y would be divide. By negative 2. But whatever we do on one side, we got to do to the other side, okay? We would divide everything by negative 2. But again, we have a problem here because we're not going to always have, you know, answers. We're not going to have numbers. We're going to have to have like, you know, literal equations like this kind of stuff. I went ahead and circled the negative 2s because they cancel. You know, we're left with y on the left side, okay? That's what it is. Let's go ahead and work with this here, okay? Technically, because we, we I do want to work with this. We have negative x divided by negative 2. Notice I put the put the negative 2. But, but essentially, I'm also making a fraction over here. I'm going to put a plus sign, and I also have 1 over negative 2, okay? That's technically what I have, okay? Because I'm dividing both of them by negative 2. I want to make sure that we see this because a lot of times if we don't see the different ways we can see the math, we might end up getting something wrong because we just don't see it here. We're going to need to simplify this bad boy. All right. I'm going to simplify it here. And notice, how can we simplify things? Well, well, we could take care of these multiple signs. Notice my first one, I have negative X over negative two. Well, a negative and a negative makes a positive. So, why, why worry this? Why overcomplicate the problem with two negatives, right? Let's just make it positive. 
And you, the student, needs to be able to do this, okay? Notice we have this negative one half here. Well, what's this positive and this negative going to create? Ultimately, it's going to create a negative, okay? So why do we worry about these two signs and all this? No, 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 just one sign. So this becomes x over 2 minus a half. And I hope that it kind of made sense. And at the end of the day, we have successfully isolated the variable, okay? And, and I kind of want to tell you, like, there's actually a lot of different ways this problem could have been written, okay? The way that we originally had it up here could have even been acceptable as well. And that's why I wanted to show you that, like, this is a good answer. I mean, you know, uh, this is a good answer. Because at the end of the day, the student, you, has to be aware that these mean the same thing, okay? Even this is a good answer because I'm, I'm going to show you this last one. Y equals notice this. Since we're both, since both of those values are being divided by negative 2, we could just put X minus 1 over 2 as well, okay? And I hope you see the differences but ultimately, they're the same thing, okay? You got to be aware of these things. And I'm just telling you, literal equations could be considered hard by some students because there's so many different ways it could be considered technically correct. But ultimately, all these ways mean the same thing. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Let's take a look at one more because, you know, we have to practice. We got to practice, and I want to do something maybe with this, like a fraction here or something just a little. I actually want to do this one here. You know what? Let's do this. Let's do the story problem here. We got ourselves number 19. I see the story problem, and I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it, okay? All right. Let me just bust this one out real quick, and then we'll go ahead and get this popping here, okay? Go ahead and read it. Hopefully, follow along. You know, hopefully, it makes sense. Let me go ahead and drag it down here. Bam. Okay. So, we got the volume of a box V is given by the formula V equals LWH, or L times W times H, where L is the length. And, and I think we've heard that before, right? Where L is the length, right? W is the width and H is the height. So essentially, we got the volume formula. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use capitals here, okay? Well, you know what? I'll just use what I have here. But notice, look, I want to use a capital L because lowercase L's, for me at least, look like a uh, 1, okay? So that's why... I'm just going to use capitals, but there, there's actually a, technically a reason why they're lowercase, okay? What I found lowercase variables stand for are things that we, you know, like maybe things we start the problem with, maybe things that we could measure ourselves very quickly, okay? Like a length we could measure with a ruler, a width we could measure, again, with a ruler or measuring tape or any of that stuff. The volume, the V, depends on other things. For example, the volume in this problem can't be solved really unless you know the length and width and height. So that's why the volume is capitalized because we're solving for the V, just in case you wanted to know, okay? But in any case, I'm just going to use my capitals L, W, and H, okay? We are going to solve for the formula for H. So I hope you could see that we want H to be isolated. We want to isolate the H, okay? We want to isolate the H, all right. So what's the H width? The H is with the length and the width. OK. And it's being used. We're, we're multiplying here. OK. So first thing we could do, we could cancel out that L. Right. And how can we cancel out the L? Well, we're going to divide both sides by L. That's our first thing. And I hope that made sense. We're going to cancel the L out because we don't want the L and the W with the H. We just want the H. So we're going to be left with V over L equals width times height. Okay, and I hope that kind of makes sense. And look, if you want, put the little dots in there. They help me. They organ it helps me with the organization. Remember, we're still trying to isolate for H. So the next step, we're going to divide both sides. Now, notice we already have a division symbol over here. So we don't need to add another division symbol. We could just divide also by this you know, W, because honestly, what I'm just going to do is divide by W on the right side. Notice how I wrote the W. 
But since the fraction already exists on the left side, you don't need to write another fraction. What we need to do is just put the W as a denominator as well. Okay, and I hope that made sense. A lot of people do, you know, sometimes they don't do this. They don't do this correctly and you get some stuff wrong. Okay, so so that's why we got to make sure we understand the rationale. Okay, and let me go ahead and just extend this purple line a little bit more down. And we got ourselves ultimately this equation. We're really manipulated. It becomes volume divided by the length and the width equals to the height. Okay, and now we have successfully isolated the H. Okay, that's what we ended up doing in this problem. So I hope that made sense how we could isolate the H. So that's for letter A. Solve the formula for H. We had V over LW equals H. Or volume divided by the length times the width equals the height. Or even better, the volume divided by the product of length and width equals the height. Okay. Now, let's take a look at letter B, and we'll go ahead and finish this off, okay? And letter B, we got ourselves, what is the height of the box? Notice, we're solving for H. That's why we had to manipulate the equation here. But anyways, letter B, what is the height of the box, right? We're looking for the height of the box when they give us a volume of 50 cubic meters. We also have a length of 10 meters, and we have ourselves a width of 2 meters, so in this problem, we got ourselves the volume is 50, and I'm just going to put the 50. Of course, the units of measurement matter as well, but I'm just going to put the 50 just for time's sake. The length is 10, and the width is 2. So in this particular problem, we could start substituting values, okay? So the V, remember this formula, V over LW equals H, right? Well, I'm going to start substituting. Instead of writing V, I'm going to go ahead and put 50. Instead of writing L, I'm going to go ahead and put 10. And instead of writing, you know, uh, what is that? With, I'm going to go ahead and put 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and make that equal to H. Of course, we could go ahead and use our calculator at this point. We could go ahead and use the math. You know, we could go ahead and just do the stuff. In this problem, we have 50, right? 50 at the numerator. 10 times 2 is the denominator makes 20 is equal to H. I hope you could see we could actually simplify very quickly. We could divide both sides by 10 of this uh, fraction to simplify it. And it actually turns into, let me go ahead and rewrite it over here, as 5 halves equals H, which is an acceptable answer. But if you want to just really get the decimal, 5 divided by 2, if you even think of it this way, we have $5 and you cut it in half. Some of us with money makes a little bit more sense. If you have $5 and you had to break it up into two people, maybe you and your brother or you and your sister have to share $5, each individual will end up with $2.50. Technically, 2.5 equals H. Okay, 2.5 equals H. But don't be worried. Use the calculator if you had to. 50 divided by 20 is 2.5. But you better do the order of operations correctly. You better have done 10 times 2 first. Okay, so at the end of the day, our answer would be the height is 2.5 meters. Of course, we can make this even better, and we could even put the height of the box. And see, that's how we just step it up here. You know, nothing's wrong with stepping it up, using real sentences, getting real answers, and doing real math. All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys have a great day. Hopefully, this little equation is kind of making a little bit of sense. We are all responsible for all of this material. And I hope I didn't super bore you. But I do hope that you got to learn a little bit of something. Or you got to be able to review some of these things. And maybe it makes a lot more sense to you. Hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy your, enjoy whatever day this is when you're watching this. If you're even watching this. All right. So have a good one. Bye-bye.